from this room, can be seen censure its report, hour by hour, and sometimes even minute by minute. While Samuel Gatches, owner of the department store H.E. Hika Company, put up KZRH, known as Radio Hickok, in 1939. Filipinos then were in an era of flapper modernism, adapting more and more to American ways. Radio broadcasts centered on music, variety shows, comedy skits, and short news cuts. Jazz and ballads became standard fare, with the English language, Western music, and American voices dominating the airwaves. Radio supplemented the educational infrastructure established by the Thomasites and became an agent for the Americanization of Uncle Sam's little brown brother. But with Asia being drawn into the vortex of the Second World War, KZRH station manager Bertrand Simon was appointed chief coordinator of information by the American High Commission. This is Rick Simon speaking from the Instead of destroying KZRH equipment, as the USAFE had done to the other stations to prevent their use by the Imperial forces, silent staff brought a shortwave transmitter to Corridor and built a makeshift radio station, which General Douglas MacArthur christened as the Voice of Freedom. The President of the United States ordered me to break through the Japanese line, the primary object of which is the relief of the Philippines. I came through, and I shall return. However, Japanese forces eventually found equipment hidden in the basement of the Hickok building in Escolta, and used these to continue broadcasting as KZRH. And it was here that General Jonathan Wainwright eventually announced the use of a surrender to the Japanese Imperial Army. Yes, the colonels were changed to PIAM, and the station bombarded listeners with music, language, literature, and even calisthenics that went one way. People of the Philippines, I have returned. By the grace of Almighty God. MacArthur's return and the American Declaration of Independence for the Philippines signaled the post-war reconstruction of Philippine radio. The Elizalde family bought KZRH from the Hickok Company and with Silence help, acquired equipment from the National Broadcasting Company in New York to establish operations at the Insular Life Building on Plaza Cervantes. KZRH was back on the air under the auspices of Manila Broadcasting Company on July 1, 1946, just in time to cover the inauguration of the Second Philippine Republic with Manuel Rojas Manuel as Rojas, president. Newly elected to the presidency, takes the oath of office as Ambassador Paul McNutt looks on. The listening audience became excited as new programming genres spearheaded the phenomenal growth of the radio industry after the war. Even the government developed its own network under the Philippine Broadcasting Service, which aired educational and agricultural programs in cooperation with the Bureau of Public Schools. Big band music, vaudeville, language, and literature flourished hand in hand with the broadcast sector. DZRH emerged the acknowledged leader during the golden days of radio, also airing comedy shows like Tang Tarang Tang, adventure shows like Capitan Kidlan, detective dramas like Johnny Dava, horror shows like Gabi Nang Lagi, and other popular serials like Ginang Hukong and Dr. Ramon Selga. And with the recording industry boom making radio even more popular, 
Network executives became more sensitive to what listeners wanted. Programming eventually shifted to include Filipino singers, musicians, and announcers, along with expressions of traditional culture such as the Kuntila. Amateur singing contests, quiz shows, children's programs, and talk shows flourished as radio became even more lucrative. Popular performers who crossed over to and from the vaudeville stage found a niche for distinctly Pinoy-flavored comedy on air. While it was customary to imitate the American vocal timbre, the Filipinization of local radio was well underway. of martial law in 1972 allowed him to close down the media and suppress dissent, censorship, threats of legal sanctions, bribery, detention, physical intimidation, and ultimately death were the weapons used by the military in controlling media. DZRH was however allowed to continue operations closely monitored by the Broadcast Media Council and eventually the Kapisana ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas. Advertising was limited per clock hour to 13 minutes. Even scripts for radio dramas were scrutinized for subversive content. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and conscientiously fulfill my duties as President of the Philippines. But with the assassination of Benigno Aquino Jr., radio was practically alone in presenting the true picture of an outraged Filipino people. And radio broadcasts were the catalyst that spurred on a nation to oust the authoritarian regime in a peaceful revolution called People Power, an event that the entire world applauded. Those were tough times. Malacanang was closely monitoring BGRH, but we were all out reporting from where we could, including Mr. Fred Elizalde himself, who personally drove one of our mobile units with Victor Dominic Philip. BGRH was determined to be at the forefront of history in the making while maintaining our neutrality. It was the only way to survive. It was also radio that played a crucial role in securing the safety of civilians during the successive coup attempts that marred President Corazon Aquino's term. In 1989, it was Ray Langin, then news director of DZRH, who negotiated on the air with rebel forces who had stationed snipers in Makati's high-rise buildings. Government and rebel troops monitored each other's moves on NBC's flagship station until the standoff was resolved. Indeed, well within the station's news and public affairs remit, Servicio Bayan 
still tops network priorities. DZRH teams are on 24-hour duty, providing public service round the clock. Disaster relief operations also rely heavily on the support DZRH renders during natural calamities, while its Operation Tour program, established in 1978, has significantly strengthened the sense of volunteerism in civic society. President Cory, uh, marami sa mga naging uh, kasama niya sa pamamahala, yung mga members ng cabinet, yung mga malalapit sa kanya, at saka mga opisyal ng gobyerno. Uh, madalas, meron kasi kaming program noon, kung tabagin yung liberty in action, yung brainchild ni Mr. Fred Rizalde. Hmm. Every day yun, merong set ng guest. Si President Cory, nag-guest sa station, pero pinuntahan namin sa mga kanya. Pero all the rest, na maging presidente, from uh, Ramos, Erop, Jimmy, lahat ang pumupunta dito. Ora, si Islam, si First while, news breaks have been expanded into full programs that include live interviews and on-the-spot coverage of important events. The news talk format now also includes discussions of subjects like medicine and health. Justice in the law, environment and sustainable development, arts and culture, showbiz personality, in 1994, under the stewardship of MBC chairman Fred J. Elizalde, DZRH embarked on a One Nation, One Station initiative, expanding its coverage to an unprecedented 97% of the Philippine archipelago. To date, it is the only station in the country that is on the air nationwide, 24 hours a day on stereo quality, simulcast via satellite to relay stations in key provincial cities. The DZRH news team has also taken new media by the horns, mining the potential of internet radio and live blogging to maximize the station's accessibility to audiences both here and abroad. More than anything, DZRH has chronicled the most important events that have shaped our history as a nation. Our family has been privileged and proud to be part of the development of Philippine radio these past 75 years. And with you beside us, DZRH will continue to play that role in the generations to come. Because despite the rapidly changing landscape of mass communication, radio remains the most intimate medium favored by many Filipinos. This is further enhanced by the station's television presence as RHTV. All these are part of our humble way of paying back the Filipino public, which for more than seven solid decades has witnessed and supported DZRH. Radio is the most accessible mass medium for the Filipino nation. And the Elizalde family takes great pride in playing a major role in the history of Philippine broadcasting through DCRH. We invested in people, equipment, and technology, but above all, in the vision of linking the entire Philippines through DZRH's One Nation, One Station. Thank you for supporting us. Una sa tamang balita. Una sa tamang serbisyo. DZRH. Pitumpot walong taon ng paglilingkod sa pagpapalita.